Hello, today I want to talk to you about cutting through a brush painted piece of paper and producing a wood block for the background of my print. So if you watched the last film we made, um, I was pasting some paper with a brush drawing onto the wood and it's for this back area of the print and basically um, what I want to do is to give some texture, some rock texture around the waterfall here. So I have started work with the block, so here's the block again and you'll remember that I've stuck down a piece of paper with a brush drawing on it to the block and then said I was going to cut it to mimic the brushwork. Well, I've done a little rubbing um, so that you can see where I've been cutting and what that looks like. So if I pop that down, you can see um, that I've been cutting. Now, I'm not religiously following every tiny scrap of the ink. What the ink drawing's doing is giving me a nice uh, reference for fluid shapes that give the impression of rocks here. Now it's when I'm showing this it's really difficult because I'm showing you something that is in black ink and you visualize it all happening as very dark and quite bold. What you've got to remember is that when I come to print this this is going to be virtually invisible. This is just the merest suggestion that there might be some rocks through the mist. So um, not all of this detail will show by any means. So if I show you now how I cut this, I've got my cutting mat here and I'm going to use a combination for the actual cutting of the texture here. I'm going to use a combination of, I've got a tiny little V tool here. This is a millimeter V tool uh, and that's featured quite a lot in my lino cut films. And then I've got um, quite a nice little power grip one here. I'm not sure what dimension that is, but that's another V tool. And then I've got my Hangito. And then I've got various clearing uh, scoops for just taking away around the block. If you do do this, it's really, really important that your paper is bone dry before you start cutting. If there's any glue or damp left with the paper it's just going to rip off the block the minute you start cutting. So do wait for it to dry. And basically I am just, I'm, I'm using the tool to kind of muddle through the, the wood and the paper to make kind of little jerky cuts that create a texture that's not very uniform. So I've got the V tool here and I'm just shimmying my hand a bit as I sort of twisting as I'm cutting because what I want is to kind of smash my way through the wood. Now if I were working on something different where what I was looking for was to catch the actual feel of a brush mark then I would be following this a lot more carefully and I, I produced work um, where that's the case and the brush mark is very important. Here the brush mark is more a guideline for me to be able to use the movement of the brush to mimic the rough areas of the rock where it's catching the light so I'm not religiously as I say following every tiny little mark. So. And I'm just allowing the rock face to be in focus here in the gorge area and then just disappear. So I may not even ink fully to the edges of this block. When I've finished doing all the cutting and I've actually no longer need the paper, what I'll do is I will put some warm water on it and let it the water soak through the paper and the whole of the paper and the glue will just lift off. I'll probably wash it gently with a little bit of soap as well because if you saw my last film you'll know that I've rubbed a little bit of camellia oil, um, this camellia oil, 
into the paper to make it more translucent so I can see what I'm doing. So I use a little bit of soap just to get rid of that oil before I start the printing. So this is quite an expressive way of cutting and it's the VTOOL is excellent for this. It's by no means um, the traditional way of cutting a Japanese woodblock. But as a creative artist, you know, I'm exploring what I want to say with the wood. And for me, this works very well. I will edit this too. Once I've done the cutting and I've washed off the paper, I will um, probably do more cutting. So I quite often, with a block like this, I quite often do work on it once I can sit, once I've printed it and I can see, because inevitably you get little sort of jarring places where the, there's not quite the movement that you want in the cutting or it doesn't look natural or what have you. Now, obviously you can't put the wood back, but you can usually edit it to be a bit more sympathetic by cutting a little bit more away. The other thing that I about this is that this, this block has got to marry with this wood block at the top. So somehow I've got to work out how I get the detail of this wood and get the benefit of this beautiful wood and then go down into the rock face in a natural way so that there isn't a like a one minute it's a plank and the next minute it's a block. You know, I need it to magically be wood grain morphing into cut wood. So um, that is a tricky little bridge that I'm going to cross when I start printing. So I'm not going to deal with that just at the moment. What I'm going to do is cut this block up to the top and then I will decide what I'm going to do when I come to print. A lot of my work is like this where I'm not quite sure how it's all going to come together in the end but I kind of keep faith that it will all come together. So here on this side, I've got an area where I'm actually going to clear quite a lot away in the middle here. When you're cutting something like this, it's always good to have a balance between sort of busy bits where there's lots of sort of detail cutting and bits where it's, it's completely smooth with a block that prints and then bits where the wood is cut away completely. Um, so that your eye isn't overwhelmed by just sort of continuous busy detail. So I'm trying to balance that. So here I'm actually just taking out a little section there. So I'll go for a U gouge and just take that bit out of there. And 
certain endings are important as well. How your how your block when you've got a block like this, how it ends so that it's not like an indecisive I don't know quite how to end it. No, it's here. I like this kind of immediacy of the the brush strokes. So that gives me a nice ending. Because after all, what I'm not doing is a, a sort of hyper-realistic rock face here. What I'm suggesting is that it's rocks, that it might be a brush painting, that it's it's kind of referencing that kind of idea of the sort of Chinese brush painting rocks and things like that. So there's a lot going on there. And I'm just sort of playing with that. And it's all going to be very vague in the back of the picture anyway. So... Um, just think about think about things like that when you're designing a print. It's quite nice sometimes to have part of the print where it's almost an abstraction. And that's certainly going to be the case here where I'm combining that uh, U wood grain with this mad piece of painted block. And you can see that I'm breaking all the rules about using the hangito knife, this um, outline knife, to cut the nice sloping crisp outline uh, for a block where I want a very finished edge. So if I just grab this block here, you can see there is an absolute contrast between what this block is going to do compared to what this much more conventional block is going to do within the print. And we'll get on to that. It'll all become much more clearer when I get to testing and proofing these blocks. So I hope that's given you a little bit of an insight into how I'm working with this, this particular block and this particular print. And I hope you'll join me again. <laughs>